Joining me today, I'm Russ Curtis, Professor of Counseling. And just for some National Counselor Exam prep, I wanted to talk about psychoanalytic therapy and cover some of the main points. Clearly, this doesn't take the place of reading the text and practicing and reading articles. But let's go with this. All right, one of the key figures clearly is Sigmund Freud. Um, this is a theory that's based, it's deterministic, meaning that a lot of your adult behavior, your thoughts, feelings, and emotions as an adult were caused early in childhood. Uh, a lot of it's related to kind of attachment stuff with mom. We'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, and that these irrational forces or instinctual drives is that we're born with kind of this innate desire to, or innate uh, drive to, uh, to survive. And sometimes that can require violence or, and, and procreate. And that if this isn't tempered or balanced, it can create problems. If it's tempered and balanced too much, that creates problems as well. So we'll talk about this. The id, ego, and superego are a part of the human psyche. And the id is related to the immediate gratification. So very related to this instinctual drives to survive. And then the ego is kind of trying to balance out uh, what's going on between the id and the superego. Uh, so the ego is a bit of a moderator. The superego is the moral codes that are learned early in life and kind of inculcated in the person. And so what the ego is trying to do is balance these two. If the superego is too much, we're going to get anxiety. If the id is too much, we'll get in all kind of trouble and also have anxiety. Uh, the libido is psychic energy that drives life instincts, the life instincts procreation, um, that innate drive that we're talking about, and death instincts, also to believe that we have this as well as there's an innate aggression. Ego defense mechanisms are aimed at regulating the anxiety caused by the id and superego power struggles. Okay, so the id's like, no, I want this now, I want to have this now, and the superego's like, no, you can never have this, and so... Ego, the, the ego calls in the defense mechanisms to help to try to temper some of this um, psychic struggle going on and reduce anxiety. Uh, so part of the therapy is to make the unconscious conscious and to strengthen the ego. So in essence, allow the ego to see like, oh, yeah, I do have these parts of myself that want immediate gratification. And maybe I have these parts of myself that are a little too moralistic, a little too hard on myself. So we're trying to bring that to the surface so we can help people look at it. The idea is that insight creates a, um, a balance of these ego structures. Okay? And we restructure the personality as a result. Now, the anonymity of the counselor is required here. So uh, frankly, if you look at more psychodynamic, uh, more of the more modern approach to psychoanalytic, they talk about the power of the relationship. But in, in strict psychoanalytic terms, the counselor wants to be a blank slate so that the client can project all of their issues and some of these instinctual desires and drives onto the counselor so that it can then be processed. It can be worked through. I don't know that he used the term unfinished business, but I will. Just that that can be brought up, you know, the counselor reminds you of your mom or your dad or somebody so that those issues can be discussed and worked through and that there can be insight about it. Um, some of the other techniques used, analysis of transference, which is what we were just talking about, that the client's projecting their issues onto the counselor, such as thinking that you're like their mom or what have you. Also resistance, um, you know, not showing up on time, uh, refusing to talk about stuff because this is a very verbal therapy, uh, maybe refusing to pay, but all of those would be explored in terms of uh, what does this mean about your personality? How is this affecting your behavior and relationships today? So again, creating insight. Dream analysis is used for the same reason. Also free association, you know, just tell me the first things that come to your mind with the idea is that this is going to bring up unconscious material so that it can be worked through. Um, this is a, it's a, a powerful theory, uh, and particularly the significance of early childhood effects on adult behavior. There's no question about that. And also the unconscious. So there's some really cool studies supporting the unconscious. Basically with Freud is that a lot of the details of his theory have not been proven, but the general idea is accepted. And... And yes, 
And then lastly, but this does this theory does ignore cultural influence, uh, racism and inequality and how that affects behavioral health and mental health. It's also too much emphasis in, and I'll say blame on the mom. Uh, so just a couple things to think about with this theory, and I'm hoping this is helpful. Let me know your thoughts and take good care.